Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Out with the ducks and nature once again uh, to really capture the conversation of, you know, how does things like Tesla and electric, et cetera, impact our, our world. So my talk today focuses on sort of a redo of my conversation regarding uh, the comparison between Mercedes-Benz and Cummins engine when it comes to Tesla and electric truck solutions. So, the guest of the station, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. This past week, uh, the last week of August 2017, Tesla introduced, uh, or excuse me, Cummins introduced um, their, their first sort of heavy truck solution. It's a class seven truck that's designed to be a, a day long tripper. The target range is about a hundred miles. And um, I did a talk on this already, but I was kind of fascinated to sort of do a comparison between what is Mercedes doing and what is Cummins do doing uh, relative to electric batteries, etc. cetera. Um, I, I should note that uh, there's a little bit of a bias here. One, because I'm an American. Cummins is an American company based in Columbus, Indiana. Two, I actually knew the former CEO and got a scholarship from them when I was in high school. So I really know the company well. I've toured their factory. A lot of smart people, some great engineers. So I want to acknowledge my bias towards Cummings in this space as you hear my talk. Um, so I was kind of fascinated to sort of compare the two companies and what they're doing because there are players in the space already like Nikola or Wrightspeed, et cetera. But in terms of having, you know, giant companies with giant market caps that are targeting the bigger trucks, class seven, class eight, I really think that, you know, probably two of the biggest giants, they may not be the biggest in market cap, are Mercedes-Benz or Daimler-Benz and Cummins Engine. Um, as you know, I, we're supported by you watching the ads, uh, you're helping us out on Patreon, as well as your like and subscribe, so we'd appreciate your support if you would. Um, I also want to thank you for your comments because it, this prompted me to sort of redo my talk uh, because of some technical issues on my previous and I, I think it resulted in sort of better thinking that, it, that I think will, will help the quality of the video. So basically Cummins came out with um, what I believe is an 18650 Tesla battery inside of a, uh, a, um, a truck trailer. Um, the trailer allegedly weighs 18,000 pounds. It's capable of uh, pulling uh, 40,000 pounds um, on a 100 mile route. And they're claiming that it's two and a half hours to recharge. So that's actually pretty fast given the size of the battery pack. Um, the uh, other raw specs uh, were that, frankly, it exists. I mean, I'm really excited by this because this is the first sort of big name entity that's US based that I see really moving in, in the big truck space, uh, both Ford, GM, you know, uh, Caterpillar, all these guys have large truck operations, but I was really happy to see that Mercedes-Benz wasn't the only sort of trucking entity that's US based uh, to some extent that's making a move in electric. Um, so my first part of the conversation is go through sort of a comparison between the two solutions that is Mercedes versus Cummins. And then the second part of my discussion is sort of get off into, um, sort of where we're going from here and why. So as I shared, uh, Cummins, you know, general specs were provided on the truck. Um, the contrast to this is that in the same capability of trucks, as you can see from my thumbnail, Mercedes-Benz or Daimler-Benz already has, uh, they have vans they've been working on with Tesla. They have light duty class six trucks. They have minivans they've been working on with Tesla. 
and all this is driven by the previous investment, uh, et cetera. Um, I just think that given that Mercedes has been working towards this point since 2006 and waiting for a battery pack that didn't weigh so much that it wiped out your ability to get any truck freight carried, you know, I think it kind of makes sense, if you will, where we're at. So I, um, you know, if, if we look at the Mercedes solution compared to Cummins, um, very similar payload of the trucks. Um, one of the big differences is that Mercedes is claiming 124 miles, Cummins is claiming 100 miles on the 18650 battery. Now, one of the big differences I'm noticing between the trucks is that Mercedes-Benz is choosing to use Tesla's um, pa uh, battery pack, but in addition the, to the battery pack, from what I can tell, Mercedes is electing to use the, dry, the electric drivetrain that's being provided by Tesla as well. So I'm wondering if this doesn't allow you to get 25% more miles out of it because of the relationship between the entire system that's been put together. Whereas in the case of uh, Cummins, Roush is a part of uh, the process that they're doing. I believe they're using Tesla batteries because of the supercharger capabilities. And then, you know, Cummins is kind of stuck because if they don't sort of build a portion of the engine themselves, they're in bad shape because um, they're not vertically integrated. So they're screwed in terms of having an aspect of the uh, vehicle that they build that they can make money on. So I'm, I think this is the beginning of what might end up having to be some big changes at Cummins. And I'll jump into that in a couple of minutes. So to sort of go back through I just wanted to say that, um, in my mind, the best uh, sort of responder to the Tesla threat, I think, has been Mercedes-Benz, uh, Daimler-Benz. And the reason is that uh, they've been an investor and made a lot of money off Tesla already, but they've also been uh, partnering with Tesla to deliver uh, products at different spaces uh, in the marketplace. and. Unlike other manufacturers, they actually have um, finished electric product uh, in the class six and class seven territory that's in customer hands, um, even if it's a test quantity. And in the case of the class six trucks, they've got tests 150 units that are around the world now being used by customers. So I just think that there's probably 10 different ways you could look at it and say Tesla, um, Tesla slash Mercedes has a huge advantage over Cummins because, um, you know, Cummins is just introducing their solution and um, Mercedes Benz has had uh, end user customers testing the products for the last two or three years. And one entity in Japan, uh, the 7 uh, Eleven stores, they are really happy with their product. And they bought 25 trucks instead of taking them on a test lease. So another factor is while Cummins is introducing its first truck, uh, in the case of uh, Daimler Benz, they're actually going to be taking orders as of September on their Class Six truck, um, which I think carries, you know, maybe 15,000 or so pounds, 15,000 to 20,000 pounds. It's the smaller of the internal to the city delivery trucks, but this shows me that they're ready to rumble. And um, I'm glad to see, you know, uh, the folks that come in, step into the space. Um, and I'm glad to see an American manufacturer get serious about it because it's unfortunate that we don't have um, a real SWAT team going on that's getting after this marketplace aggressively. So now on to this whole issue of vertical integration. So Cummins, as you know, is an engine manufacturer and they partner with a whole bunch of different truck body makers to provide engines. And then they have all the repair services, et cetera. I see three big problems for Cummins. Problem number one, 
When you build a car battery, there are 18 parts in a Tesla electric engine, and it's, there are 2,000 parts in an ICE or internal combustion engine. So I'm not saying a truck engine has the same, you know, 2,000 parts, but let's say Elon Musk claims that he's going to use three or four Model 3 batteries to push his um, Class 8 solution. What this means then is that um, Cummins is going to have to respond with their electric solution and they too will have very few moving parts when it comes to an electric engine just because of how the process works. So I believe that this represents a real nightmare challenge for entities like Cummins that are concentrated on the engine. And the reason is if you look at how uh, Tesla is vertically integrated, you know, one of the things about Mercedes-Benz is they're actually building their own uh, mega factory and planning more factories to produce batteries. And so, one, Cummins doesn't produce batteries and doesn't have that vertical integration to do so. But I believe that this may force Cummins into a situation where they have to merge sort of upline to start to get into that vertical integration necessary to be competitive in a world of electric uh, trucks of all types. Um, I, I, it's intriguing to see something as small as Tesla force larger entities to shift over to its world of vertical integration. But the problem is that um, you have to find a way to earn a profit and the, and the non-vertically integrated process is really not working as we move towards electric simply because you don't have as many moving parts and so therefore if you're not in the battery which is half the cost of the vehicle it becomes very difficult I think to make any kind of a profit in that world if you're not vertically integrated at least at the battery level um, so you know let's say a truck is four times the number of parts inside of a uh, uh, inside of their engines compared to what um, a tr what a traditional car would be when you come to an electric vehicle. So again, you have 40 or 50 moving parts inside that truck. Uh, they're heavy duty, but it doesn't take mechanics or rebuilds or all the other things that go with it a lot. So I think it Cummins, et cetera, loses a lot of revenue here. So my read on this whole thing is that one, it's great that Tesla, is, in, uh, Tesla is, is working with a new company, in this case Cummins, as a buffer against their relationship with Mercedes. Two, um, I really think that the process that t uh, um, Cummins is going through suggests that their business model might be in trouble because Tesla is making it clear that vertically integrated, particularly at the battery level, is going to be a critical element of being able to have a future in this field. So my hats are off to Mercedes because they're way well organized. They're working to compete with Tesla in a number of different uh, frames, including batteries, power walls, cars, trucks, etc. And they already have the working relationship with them to really understand what Tesla can do. So I'm hopeful that other U.S. manufacturers or domestic manufacturers will get started in a similar way to both Tesla and, and uh, Cummins, but um, I really think that uh, there's going to be having to be some radical change on the part of all U.S. manufacturers and especially ones that are not vertically integrated to stay competitive in this space. Um, is it an immediate nightmare? No. I think it'll take four to six years before you start having enough battery capacity, et cetera, to service the needs of those giant trucks. But I will say that I, it won't go 10 years before we have a radical difference. And if Cummins doesn't meet the challenge, I, I think they either end up out of business or a subsidiary of a vertically inter integrated player. And who knows? I would say they'd be vertically integrated and hooked up with Mercedes uh, or Daimler Brands, but that's a bad combination because Mercedes already has a freight ladder division and they build their own truck parts, so there's no need for them to merge with a Cummins type company. But I think this is really going to radically change what's going on in the industry, and it's worth keeping an eye on, especially in light of what's going to happen in the Tesla announcements. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Look forward to your comments. 
tous m'excuse au revoir à la hitre haute Choda Hafez. I'm going to again take you out uh, nature style uh, with the ducks and the, and the water. Please like and subscribe and look forward to your comments.